often. Uh, so that you don't have to get too many hits from it. But if you can dodge everything else, which is pretty easy to do, the Frost Punch shouldn't be too much of a worry in the battle with them. Once again, a save screen. And now we have our third Robot Master, which is, in my opinion, the hardest of the first set of four. Uh, this is Tengu Man. Now, Tengu Man is actually a Robot Master who appears in another game as one of the main bosses. Now, of course, like I mentioned earlier, Cut Man and Wood Man appearing in the Sega Saturn version of this game. But, uh, as main Robot Masters, he's one of the only, I think, that actually appears in multiple titles. He appears in this and Rock Man and Fort, or uh, Mega Man and Bass. Now, Tengu Man stage, since they had to obviously have a theme for it, he ends up being one of the wind-style enemies. Something that we've seen are the Airman-style enemies. But it does have a lot of interesting things to it. We start off with this whole bubble thing, where we'll have to get into a bubble and navigate it through a whole spike area. We saw something a little bit similar to this, actually, uh, in Mega Man 9, uh, which was obviously released after this game, but it was back in the 8-bit form. Uh, we have to deal with some wind jumping, where the wind's uh, pushing either for us or against us, and we have to judge our jumps with that. But, when we make it a little bit into it, we see Rush appear, we jump on his back for the Rush Jet, and now we actually have, like, a horizontal shooter. We have to slowly scroll through the areas, similar to what you've done in any horizontal shooter, or, I guess, comparable uh, to Sonic the Hedgehog uh, in, the, uh, in Sonic 2, in the uh, plane-style level. Now, during these parts, we'll have to take out a lot of enemies. You can also get different upgrades. As you can see, right now, I got the first one I got was the Rush upgrade, which allows you not only to shoot your Mega Buster, but Rush shoots out a spread three shot, which is definitely one of the most effective of these little upgrades that you can get here. The other little friends and stuff that we've met in the other games, uh, right there, for example, is Eddie, or Flip Top, who used to give us items in the other Mega Man titles. He appears in this game as a addition or upgrade or power-up for our horizontal uh, shooting area here. Now this is, ends up being most of Tengu Man stage is taken up by this whole area as we make it to our continuation point which just continues uh, the whole horizontal shooting area here. But easily the worst thing about it is that we lose our upgrades that we just got. I lost the spread shot and Eddie as you obviously can tell. So I don't have them, I have to get my upgrades once again. That's a little bit of definitely an annoyance, especially when you had to get them in the first area. Now, right there I got my first of this area. I got Beat the Bird, who we've seen in several uh, games throughout the Mega Man series, first appearing in Mega Man 5 uh, by collecting all the uh, Mega Man letters, and then we saw him in 6 again, and then he had a little bit different of an ability in 7, uh, actually saving us from pitfalls. However, in this game, he just aids us along with our side-scrolling shooter area here. Now, I just got another one. We have Auto up here, here who has a big, giant cannon that shoots out a big rocket, uh, which is very powerful. However, obviously, you can only shoot it out so quickly, so that can be a little bit of a problem trying to hit certain enemies because he fires uh, pretty slowly. This is uh, the hardest part of the stage, being in a smaller area, they're opening up different things, taking out the platforms. You have to take out the platforms to actually stop the uh, addition of them to keep adding robots to the area. And then when you reach the end, you have a giant laser here, which can do a lot of damage. You want to make sure that you stay out of the range of the laser uh, at all costs. Take out the robots if you can as they're coming around at you, but just make sure you at least dodge that laser. Now I just got Eddie again, and take out that laser. Now after we fly for a little bit longer with no enemies to take care of, our buddies fly off. We land on a platform and now we'll have to uh, do another one of these bubble spike areas navigate our way through the spike maze here. Uh, when we reach the top, we'll have some more platforming be, uh, before the Robot Master Chamber. Now this whole part with the bubble and the spikes is definitely hard to navigate on your first attempt. The whole physics and all of floating upwards and maneuvering around with the bubble uh, can be a challenge at first. You kind of need to memorize the pattern or take it slow, especially on your first couple of attempts uh, to make sure that you can get through that area. 
Now I'm going to attempt right here to get one of the harder screws in the game. There we go. It's probably not one of the hardest, but it's definitely, uh, you have to make sure that you're prepared for that one. Uh, get a little bit of a health upgrade here. One of the things about the game is they definitely put a lot of random, like, big health upgrades throughout a lot of the stages to help you out and your health back up. Uh, usually after really hard areas or right before a boss chamber. Now here is Tengu Man. Now uh, Tengu Man, uh, in case you're wondering, it's a, uh, a supernatural creature from Japanese myth and, and folklore and such of kind of humans uh, and, and birds kind of mixed together, even though it means like heavenly dog. Uh, I'm not an expert on it, but that's as much as about I know. Now for the actual battle with Tengu Man, he has several abilities. He has his jet move that he's going to come right down and sweep at you, which I suggest jumping over and then he'll immediately land near you so you can deliver a shot and he has two main moves that he shoots out he either shoots out this straight tornado which fires you straight up in the air and holds you so that he can hit you easily like he just did there to me or he has that one where it wraps around you and kind of sends you off the edge if it does hit you thankfully usually it won't take you too far off the edge and you'll be able to just escape out of it and land back on the platform you have to deliver and choose the timing of your shots carefully when you actually want to hit him. I suggest avoiding the tornado altogether, um, stay away from it when he releases it, uh, and then try to deliver hits either when he does the sweep or if you can jump over that ball move that he throws at you. Jump over that and then deliver your shot to him. In my opinion, he's definitely the hardest of the ones that we faced so far. And our final Robot Master of this area is my personal favorite Robot Master of Mega Man 8. This is Clown Man. Now Clown Man has a carnival theme, obviously, to his stage, and it's very colorful. The whole balloon's flying up there at the very beginning, just shows the graphical compa uh, capabilities of the PlayStation 1. But then when we fall in here, we have Gutsman robots, like the one that we've battled actually in Mega Man 7. We also have little Iceman dolls from Mega Man 1, and we have the Stegosaurus enemies that we placed in Slash Man stage in Mega Man 7. Now I'm going to show off the Rush Bike ability for the first time. This is probably the only time I'll use it throughout the run, and you don't need to use it here by any means. It's just kind of a little fun thing to run through this area. I'll probably take a lot of damage while doing so. Uh, but it's just really cool to look at, just to have Mega Man uh, and Rush as a motorcycle. It definitely also allows me to travel a little bit quicker through certain areas. Um, now you may notice it didn't have a meter of how long it could be out there, but it actually had a timer. You may have noticed it underneath my health bar and lives. It actually has a timer that counts down for how long uh, you're able to use it. Now more stuff falls on us and we'll fall through the ground and by doing so we actually end up in our mini boss of this stage. We have this lion head here on this circular area, this coin style monster that bounces back and forth. Uh, he'll release two little ones that bounce off the walls as well when he's in the center of the screen. He's pretty easy to uh, dodge underneath of him. Uh, and the other ones take out usually one and just like for the other one to bounce around and take it out as you can or just wait for it to automatically explode after a little bit. Uh, but by defeating at least one of them, uh, you'll be able to easily maneuver around. He'll also from time to time drop out those little mini uh, marching robots as well. Uh, they're easy to take out with a full charged up shot. And you can really just focus on him. And for the mini bosses, he's pretty easy. Now for defeating him, we actually got the Rush Charger ability which uh, will allow you to summon Rush, who will then give you a random charge-up item. So that's definitely a little bit of an interesting twist on everything. There's also a Rush Health one as well, uh, which we'll get later on in Aquaman stage, which would actually give you a health item. Now, for the gimmick or area in this whole stage, what we'll have to deal with is the different boxes you can see uh, that will either drop you through to spikes, or will allow you to stay you know, comfortably on them. You have O, X's, and Skulls. Uh, the way, obviously, that you can tell when they're about to open up or whatever and which one you're on is that little guy in the background hits uh, his hammer uh, on the bell in the background, causing you, whatever one you're on, 
to then go into effect. So if you're on a skull, they're gonna open up, but if you're on the circle or O, then you're safe, and then just wait a second, and then you can continue on uh, moving through that area. We're also gonna have to deal with some question mark ones in just a little bit, uh, where we'll have to jump into the right one in order to progress farther uh, into the stage. So right here, we have to deal with it, wait for the guy to hit the bell in the background. We'll fall through and it'll teleport us to the next one. We can move on. Now when there's multiple ones, it's sometimes hard to judge which one you're supposed to go to. And the pattern, I think there's two possible patterns for which way and which ones they'll take you to. So right now, I'm just figuring out which one. Now that one's... Okay, that one's the wrong one. Thankfully, it didn't teleport me back down. So I'm gonna try the one all the way on the right here. There we go. We have all of them. Stand on this one. There we go. And takes you 